Conversations with Malik Podcast Show, coming to you from New York. We're glad to have you and thank you all who are listening or watching this show. This podcast is about the stories of transformation of regular people during the basic struggle and pain of life. Everyone has a testimony. We all have survived the darkness. Now let's talk about how we got to the light so we can help our brothers and sisters who still haven't overcome their demons. But guess what I told you? We all have devils on different levels. So through conversations, we use the tools of insight to light the path of hope. Let's have a chat and stop running from our issues. If we live through it, then talking about it probably won't kill us. That's what we're doing. Talking, crying, looking inward so we can grow outward is the theme of this show. Right. The caterpillar transforming into the butterfly is the goal and purpose of this podcast. When you talk about you, I learn about me. Iron sharp as iron, steel sharp as steel. So we can cut through the fog of despair into the hope of today. Welcome to Conversations with Malik. And before we start today's show, please don't forget to follow us. Please. Please. Don't forget to follow us at ConvosWithMalik.com. ConvosWithMalik.com. Instagram, ConWMalik. YouTube. The YouTube is just kind of freshly up and we getting the videos on there regularly. We on Apple, Stitcher, Spotify. Check us out, man. Check us out. And listen, we just celebrated our year anniversary. It's been a year for That's us. That's right. And listen, and, and, and we're blessed, and, and, and I'm encouraged. You know, listen, I'm I'm walking on the street. I'm bumping into people. They're like, yo, you did. How about, how about, the, bill, how about the billboards? We got the billboards. I be getting hit up with the billboards, man. They yeah. be like, Psst. Yeah, people taking pictures, sending them to me like, <laughs> oh, man. And um, I can't wait till we get up in Times Square. Oh, listen, listen. God is good. And you, from your from your lips to God's ears, brother. Yo, you know what I'm right. saying? And, and so, listen, we got another great interview. We're working. We're constantly working. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm blessed and honored to, to, to be able to do a show, to, to have people that want to come on the show. Yeah. Because imagine if they, nobody wanted to come here. Yeah. And so I don't take that for granted. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. You know, and, and, and today, you know, we got Andrea uh, Mayberry from uh, We Care uh, Foundation. Miss Berry Cares Miss Foundation. Miss Berry Cares Foundation. Yeah. I got it on the drop. <laughs> and, yeah. then I, and, then I, and then I messed it up here. That's okay. Miss Berry Care, we care Foundation. No, Miss Berry, Berry Cares, Cares Foundation. Foundation. Yes. Right? And listen. Ever since I know she was coming, I, I've been looking, I've been reading. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm excited to talk to her. She sent in the questionnaire. I today, feel like I know her. And and she was transparent in the questionnaire. She's very transparent. Which is good. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get it before I... And you know what's funny? <laughs> I got it on the drop, but before I leave, Miss Berry Cares Foundation. Yay! Yes! Yes! Gracious. Yes! Get your life. Miss, get yes! My, get my podcast life together. That's right. <laughs> And let me tell you something. It's been, it's been, let me tell you, for me, it's been a long ASS day. Started out five this morning. Past two weeks, I've been on the grizzly grind. Oh, it be crazy sometimes, man. You know, hey. after the holidays, you know how we try to pay the bills, brother. Yo, man, listen, and everything possible that could happen is happening, but I'm pushing on, brother. Hey, listen, man, God is good. So. I'm, I'm, I'm pushing through. And, and 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 she's also CEO of Cozy Essentials. Cozy Essentials. I got that Cozy right. Essentials. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> and, 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 and so we're going to talk with her. We're going to talk about her life, some of the things she's been through, the wonderful things she's doing now. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Because that's what we do here on the show. We that's inspire what we hope. Inspire hope, our man. stories. And, and sometimes it's funny because, you know, people, they, they look and they, they don't, necessarily see what people have been through to get to where they are right right you know but we all just correct. we all just we all got stories we all God. got stories some of us is not as transparent but that's okay you know through the result of shows like this uh that's what get them to want to express their story no to doubt. be able to help others absolutely you know and i'm glad we do what we do man you know yeah and and so listen we got a regular show we're going to talk some current events uh, we got guess this and guess this is a guess is a portion. Guess this is a portion of our show, where we you know we just try to bring some humor in our show. So you know we just gonna play something and we just want for you to guess who it people. is. It could okay. be a movie. It could be a sitcom. It could be somebody's a motivational speaker. We just want you to guess who it is. But okay. listen to what the person is saying before you say. It. Don't make a mistake now. Okay. <laughs> 
And, <laughs> and so the word of the day, and because she has a foundation, is thinking of the word of the day. And the word of the day is give. Oh, you got give. I had something else, but all right, we leave give. The word of the day is give. I heard a knock on the door. I don't know why I'm hearing a knock on the door right now. Nobody <laughs> should be knocking on the door because we do the show. Door. Nobody should be knocking on, knocking on the door right now. But there's a knock at the door. But the word of the day is give. And the reason why, because when you have a foundation, you're giving back. Right. And so what we do is we talk briefly about the word of the day uh, for about 30 seconds to a minute. So being that you haven't had time, what does give mean to you, my hey, brother? Listen, man, giving is good, man. You know, um, you give because you want to give. You give because it's in your heart. Mm -hmm. You give because you care. You don't give because you feel like it's necessary. I mean, it is. I think it is necessary, but it comes from the heart. Mm -hmm. When I think of give, I think of give, but don't have to mention it to a person. Well, you know what? I gave you this. You know, you come into an argument with somebody, be like, but yo, you remember when I gave you this? You're really not supposed to mention what you give to somebody. Right. You know, because you gave it from the heart. Right. If you have to mention it, that means it really didn't come from the heart. Right. It came from somewhere else. Gotcha. So giving is from the heart. No doubt. What does the word give mean to you? It's to me, give is unconditional. Mm -hmm. It comes from your soul, your gut. And you just do it. You don't think about it. So that's what it means to me. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I do agree with you in yeah. reference to just not, you know, boasting and bragging about it. You give out of love. Um, that's that's why I give. How about when somebody? How about when somebody? Uh, I'm just gonna say this because you know there was a scenario that just recently happened. Right. You know. Um, is a sister that I know, and um, uh, you know we was we was we was talking. Uh, she was real sweet. Mm -hmm. um, things didn't work out, so uh, it just wasn't compatible. You know, is, she is, wanted. Is that the bad date night? No, nah, that's not the bad date night. Oh, okay, <laughs> that's somebody else. <laughs> Goodness gracious! But oh, I'm pray for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, Here we a go. Incidents. Here we go. <laughs> okay, let's get, get to the give part. I'm, I want to hear this. All right, so a sister that I know, right? <laughs> um, it just wasn't compatible. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes for me is it's not a, about just being attractive. It just, I mean, we forget the fundamental things of getting to know each other. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's important. You know, so sometimes it takes certain people time. So now, um. I realized that this wasn't going to work out, you know. Um, she still wanted to remain friends, mm -hmm. okay. Um, I didn't call her as much, as much as I was when I thought maybe something might transpire, right. you know. Mm -hmm. um, a weeks went by, months went by, I have never heard from her. I look at my phone the other day and I see a cash app request. When I look at it, I see her name. Ooh. So I find that interesting. It's going down like that where you just cash at request people for money before you ask them. That's that's the way that's the way the world is going I, right I, now. I'm trying to figure out what part of the game is this. Wow. I get a cash app request from her and she's requesting for some money from me. How much? A hundred dollars. Oh, and that didn't even require a phone call. So that's the new school. And way. I'm like, that's the new school I don't way. recall uh, getting any phone call or anything. I mean, I mean. So did you give? <laughs> I didn't give. All you, you had to give. do was hit the button. I, I mean, I, did, I didn't give. Not even $25? I didn't give nothing. Ooh. And the reason $10? Why, not a dime. And the reason why I didn't give. <laughs> and the reason why I didn't give. Let me explain the reason why I didn't give. Mm -hmm. The reason why I didn't give is because I just felt like you know, there might be a possibility that I'm being used. Okay. So you're saying there's a difference. You say possibility or for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying there's a difference between there's, sometimes there's an area there between giving and being used. Exactly. But okay. 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 Can I, can I just, can I just. Please, please. Can I just, can I just. Please, yes. please. So 
What I would like to say is I do understand your point. God didn't say be a fool. But what I will say is if you wanted to give from the bottom of your heart, irregardless of what she needed it for, you know her, so you know her situation, you know her circumstances or her challenges. So maybe there was a challenge, but you didn't take the time out to even consider or see what was going on. Be, let me let me just finish. Mm -hmm. Because for one, you was consider being in a relationship with her. You should have looked at her as a friend. That's where you went wrong. Because if you can't be in a relationship with somebody that you don't consider a friend. So whether it works out or not, you will still be their friend. Number two. Okay. If she didn't pick up the phone, then that don't mean you couldn't pick up the phone and make sure she was straight. Because this is somebody, again, that you was talking about, thinking about dealing with. But okay? So... It don't matter what she does because you got to be accountable for your own actions, your own character, your own integrity, and your own morals. The end. Okay. I understand. But but here's the thing. Everything after but, you know, is, is, is bullshit. Uh, everything but. Everything. That's everything why I, turn, but I turned bullshit. around to you after that point. Here's the thing. I already turned around to you. It, like, it, no, I'm just I mean, is it, it's, 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 is it, I mean, at this point, is it okay to just, I mean, we have not kept in touch, mm -hmm. you know? I made a few attempts to, you know, touch base with her, and mm -hmm. you know, I haven't been successful. Yeah, but I think, but I think what she's saying is that's not the point. I think the point is, you didn't even check to see if it was something. Because the was, word of the day is give, and you you asked yeah. both of us what the definition was, yeah. and you was over there pouring your heart out. I mean, listen, and, and I you feel like was I was saying, you. Had, you were saying, you oh, an giving is give. giving is this and, and giving is and that. Listen, and listen, Ms. Barry, I feel like Ms. Barry, I was you know what? Because the fact that. You mentioned it. That means it was on your mind, and yeah. you could have probably went about it in a different I mean, way. Case closed. That's it. Now, <laughs> and let me tell you. So, tell so you what give, what give means to me is we kind of give people a platform here to tell their stories. I don't make no money off of this. We don't, right? Mm -hmm. We do this. We come here. We. Give our give up our time, and we in New York. And we for in, my followers, I'm in Long Island, New York, Ball, Baldwin. Yeah. I'm Baldwin. in Baldwin. We in Baldwin. I'm in Baldwin, New York. That was three hour drive. Yeah, we're in the nice wow. part of we're in the nice oh, yeah. part of New York, though. We're not in the hood. Listen, <laughs> it was a three hour drove drive. Three hours to get here. That's my give back. <laughs> that you, wow, you giving Beautiful. me an interview in front of your all your um all your followers and stuff. So I. Came up here, and at least okay. I could have got Miss Berry Kids Foundation, right? <laughs> <laughs> you bought it in this interview. You just said it right. No, you just you just got it right. That's two Yo, times you got it right. You gotta oh give yourself God. some credit. Yo, but what I'm but what I, but what we're saying is, is is like I understand like the whole thing. I'm not saying be a fool by all means, but giving don't always have to be financial. You could have just gave her your time. If you could, you didn't want to get the money, you don't feel comfortable. You could have just called her up just to say, you know, are you cool? Is everything okay? That's giving your time. So everything is not financial. Like we gotta like change our thinking. Given if you if you're that type of person that's yeah. gonna give, yeah. then you gotta you really gotta be wholeheartedly serious about that. Well, somebody asked me for a dollar today, and I gave them five dollars. Okay, but see, you you <laughs> you're not unconditional. See, it's see. Let me tell you something else. It's not about the person. It's about you. Right. Mm -hmm. So when you making, when you, you know, when you deciding, you know, if you're going to call her back, you know, if you're going to call her back and she, you know, she's asking you for something and you want to give back, but you not going to call her back. So you want to ignore her. But then the person on the street, you want to get $5 to, then you're not unconditional being whole hard. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. I see you what you're saying. I still feel like I was to... being used, though. Yeah. No, you might have been. But what I'm saying is you sh still investigate because maybe she was out on the street or something. Maybe she really needed never your assistance. Know. You never know. Maybe she just needed to talk to you. Maybe that was her way of getting your attention because she knows she hadn't called you back. It's just a lot of things could it's come to play. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff. <clears> you know, <throat> women play games think, you like never, that. You never know. You never I'm know. Just saying. And it's funny because I was reading, and I love your mission statement. Um, Miss Berry Cares Foundation is an organization that provides resources, education, and support for the parents and guardians of children from ages 4 to 19. Mm -hmm. And the mission statement to empower, inspire, educate, dope, 
and offer resources to parents of the children who are striving for stardom, mm -hmm. right? Because, you know, it, it, and I get to that. In addition, offering an advocacy platform for individuals caring for children with ADHD, mm -hmm. which we're really going to get into. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the vision is parents being equipped with the tools to better to be better advocates and supporters for the dreams of their children. And it's like, we tell our kids to dream big, right? Mm -hmm. And we're going we're gonna to go, I'm starting here, but then we're going to go back through your story and, and, mm -hmm. and come back here. We tell our children to dream big, <clears throat> but there has to be a system and a foundation in place so mm -hmm. that those seeds of the dreams can actually flower mm -hmm. and come to fruition. If mm -hmm. not, they're just going to be hopes and dreams, and that's all they're going to be. Absolutely. Obviously, this comes, this whole mission statement and, and what you're doing with the foundation comes from, um, you know, you having experiences where, you know, you wanted the best for your children and, mm -hmm. and, and for your for your child, mm -hmm. um, in your questionnaire, and, and in the in the cali in the caterpillar phase, you talked about learning how to get through the process when you've been in an abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, some people use tough times as an excuse to um, navigate from what I said to go around it. Yeah. Right. That's not going to help anyone. <coughs> so for me, um, in, in the first part of my book, um, which is Before Empire Raised and Brush Here, Yes, yeah, the Greatest Gray, in the first part of my book, that's what I speak about. I speak about the domestic violence piece of it um, because I, that's how I, I started out as a parent, um, single mom. Mm. I, I had already had a daughter who was turning two before I had Brush Here, and during my seven months, pregnancy is when I went through um, the abuse where it was so traumatic. Um, my tooth right here is actually fake. My front tooth is actually fake because it was knocked out of my, knocked down my throat. And it, I talk about it so graphic in the book. Okay. Because I wanted parents, mother, father, because men get abused While too. While you were pregnant? While I was pregnant. I was seven months pregnant. Um, and the reason why I talk about it is because I wanted anyone who's going through it that you know, whether you have children or not, is that to understand you don't have to stay in it. I was a single mom of two children, um, living with my mom, um, not finished school, um, being in a society where they, where you know, people talk about you and say you have to be married, you're never going to make it, your children ain't going to be anything. So I went through a depression. I talk about all that in the book, but I also talk about my faith in God and how I prayed. And I always wasn't where I wanted to be with God, where I'm at now, because I'm mm -hmm. constantly rising. No doubt. Um, but I knew, I had sense enough to know where to go when I needed um, to, to get my strength from. Because it had took the all godly mighty of strength of me to get mm -hmm. through that, because what I was doing was set an example for my children. Right. And if I stayed in the relationship, I didn't know if my children was going to, later on be abused right you know so i had to make the decision it wasn't about me you know because when you're young you think you in love yeah, and yeah. oh he didn't mean it no yeah. it took one time for me gotcha one time and that was your breaking point that was it that was my breaking point and then i also <laughs> talk about in the book where um after i had um brochure because i had them early because of the trauma that i suffered mm -hmm. um <clears throat> i talk about trying to co-parent with this individual and um, meeting him outside in the street. And when I met him around the corner, I was only, what, two, three weeks in <coughs> of, of post having brush here. Right. When he, when I went to meet him, he threw me on the ground. He kicked me, spit, spit on me. It, it just was, it, it was exactly what I thought it would be. Right. Um, if I had stayed with him. And I talk about how I got through that moment. I don't want to tell it all because I want everybody to go get the book. No, gotcha. Um, yeah. Um, but I talk about how I got through that moment. And it was just, you know, for me, it was definitely an eye-opener because I love, first of all, I love myself first. 
in order to love, you know, f- from me loving myself, I'm able to love my children and be a protector for them. Mm-hmm. So for that, even though I thought I was in love, I really thought I was in love. I thought he was just going through something. Right. But for me, I had to change my thinking. And then changing my thinking, I was able to get out of it. What resources did you use to change your thinking? God. Mm-hmm. I was young. I, I didn't want to. I was did embarrassed. To, did you go to church? Did you? I you didn't go to church. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I did <laughs> not go to church. Okay. I was embarrassed. I had a black eye. I had. I was just emo- emotionally damaged. and. Because mm-hmm. um, you spoke about fasting and praying. Right. Yeah, yeah, I did. I fasted and I prayed, right. but I didn't go to church. I did all that in the house because, mind you, I had two small children. And I was already embarrassed that I had to wake up and my daughter see my face. Mm. although she was Mm. two um so for me you know if that was really the point of okay if we if i can't co-parent on my own without having supervision or having like one of my brothers or somebody with me then it just won't happen i just had to pray about it right you know god is his father you know so that you at the time did was there any support family support my mother i had um I, I like I, I was I had younger I'm the oldest um mm-hmm. between my I had my brother and my sister through my mom and so I was the oldest so I've always been like the round the way girl so I was always cool always cool with like the guys even the street guys on the corner and stuff gotcha. like that so I even talk about some of that in my book mm-hmm. um so I had a lot of support from them it's like I, I I can still walk the street but I had to make the decision like if I'm going to really leave i had to really leave him alone because i had you will be putting other people involved Mm -hmm. right in the situation my brothers you know my mom so i got a restraining order um i talk about a time when i went rashir was um in the hospital because of the trauma i i suffered after, after i had him through birth he was having some breathing problems so um i talk about how he the father came to the hospital and we had a little situation there so mm-hmm. it was just you know I'm, I'm not gonna give it all away because right, of the yeah, book but yeah. um i talk about those challenges because i want people to understand that you too can get through it it's mm-hmm. just the process like i'm 40 gonna be 48 years old and what i learned is that everything we go through all the challenges are really just storms yes. and what happens yeah. and when, when there's a big storm outside you run for cover like you go for shelter until it's over Right. And then you might watch TV, you might go to sleep, you might, whatever you do through that process, you do, and you right. get through it. It's the same thing with the challenges in life, is is the process of getting from A to B, when you, for me, it's when I was abused, and to how to get through all that. You know, that the process is the hardest. So that's why I was fasting and I was praying. And for some people, they might, you know, they might go to drugs or alcohol, so I always encourage people if you can just get through the process. Your process might be thirty minutes, mm-hmm. thirty year, um, thirty um, days, or two weeks, or six months. It's that process. Just understand that it's going. It's a light at the end of that tunnel. Right. You just had to get through that process. When you talking about, um, you know, the ADHD and Bashir having a, being diagnosed, mm-hmm. with it, I know that sometimes they're quick to diagnose our children all the time. And, you know, he's mm-hmm. bad. He, he has ADHD. HD and sometimes that phrase is kind of that saying is kind of just thrown around real loosely. Mm-hmm. Was that an actual diagnosis or was Bashir just a little badass kid? <laughs> so, so here's the thing: it's it's like it's it's real funny with that, especially when they're diagnosed when they're trying to diagnose your child under five. Mm-hmm. Because for me, I was the parent to say, "Y'all is crazy. Y'all crazy as hell." Right. It ain't him, right? You know, or y'all just don't know how to handle <coughs> my son, right? You know, because he's mm-hmm. African American, right. so y'all just don't know how to handle him. And in some cases, that's true. Yeah, in A some cases, cases yeah. in some cases that is true. But you got to think about the foods that we're eating. There's a lot of stuff in these foods. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, because if you look at the amount of cases that children are diagnosed or they're trying to diagnose, and if you really look at their signs and symptoms and not just think that everything is false right because when you do that you do a disservice to your child so you need to investigate everything because yeah, there's a lot of stimulants mm-hmm. it's a lot of you stimulants know, in, in these in foods the sweeteners and absolutely. things there's a lot of stuff that's causing that your eat. mind to, absolutely yeah because so, when i eat poor 
I notice that my mind races when I and you're eat tired. quality food. And you get tired. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have more energy, but I'm more serene. Mm-hmm. I'm more still, especially mm-hmm. when I intermittent fast like I usually do, where mm-hmm. I go, you know, long periods of not eating. Mm-hmm. I'm just like more still and like more centered. Mm-hmm. You know, and you're then, not as you're not as upbeat. I'm not, I'm, I, I'm I'm upbeat, but I'm just not all over the place. Yeah. Right. And so for me, I was the parent that that wasn't um re, uh, um receptive to what they were saying. Mm-hmm. Um, because I'm like, how can you tell if he's just not being a terrible too, right. or he's just not you know trying to find himself as a little boy? He's under five. Y'all crazy. Right. right. So he was so actually diagnosed. He was. They were trying to diagnose him. They was telling me that this was a what this what it was, and I didn't take him back. Gotcha. So. Um, because with that, sometimes it come, becomes medication. And what I'm learning is that um, the child that's under five should not be taking medication because only mm-hmm. medication they have is like it's almost like a blood pressure medication. It makes their blood pressure go down. So mm. y'all not doing that. Like so sedated. Yes. I seen a kid. So like that, that. that's not happening, right. right? So what I did was so. Because I was young and I was uneducated, I was wasn't listening to them, mm-hmm. and so what it did, it got worse. So when he got to the fifth grade, when he got the to kindergarten, um, every day they would call me, and I'm like, he's only in the kindergarten. Like, what do you mean that he's not listening to you? I don't believe in it. Mm-hmm. He's only he's only in the kindergarten. Mm-hmm. Like, he has to be listening. Mm-hmm. So they kept saying, "Well, listen, you gonna have to come get him." I've, I've been at my job 18 years now. So back then I was nervous because I thought I was going to get fired. So I said, let me go up here and see what's going on with this boy. Mm-hmm. I go up there and I start observing stuff and I started paying more attention. And mm. the first thing I did once again is I prayed because I said, I need to be able, if something, if this is true, I need to be able to effectively, intelligently, advocate for him for him mm-hmm. to be the best young man that he can be because gotcha. he already have different stigmas on him anyway as being a young black male no doubt. Yeah. so no for doubt. me is if i had not listened and started to educate myself on what they were saying not that not only did i didn't agree mm-hmm. but because i didn't agree it made me want to educate myself to find out what they were saying. And once I started educating myself, I started to see exactly what they were saying. Mm-hmm. So I said, okay, Lord, you know, give me, please give me the wisdom, the strength and understanding mm. and patience to be able to mm. deal with this young yeah. man. Yeah, Wisdom, strength, wisdom, and, strength understanding. and understanding. And patience. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> okay. So, because I was working, oh, I, because I was working two, you know, two jobs. I was doing 16 hours a day, wow. four days a yeah. week, Speaking of going that. to football practice, uh-huh. dance practices, right. being a team mom, wow. doing all of that. Yeah. So for wow. me, it's just wow. what, what saved mom. us yeah. was Super the mom. fact that I educated myself. And that was when they diagnose your child, they don't tell you what to do mm-hmm. after that. They don't tell you what to do. So I got on the internet Whatever that little packet was that they give you with all of your rights, I read through the whole thing. Did your research. And, and I did my research. And mm. in the back of it was a, it was advocates. It was an advocate number. And I called that lady almost every day. She was going through a divorce. She taught me a lot of things along with getting on Google. Googling mm. it, going to the back then, I was going to the library. Wow. Because I would have my children go to the library and read, and I would be looking up stuff I need to look at. I would be mm-hmm. sneaking at work. Mm-hmm. I would talk, have my folders. You yeah. talked about it here, too. You said for the past 17 years, you know, you maintain a position in the medical field. Mm-hmm. Um, you worked in three critical care units in the hospital. Yep. And I'm you, still you, there. you're definitely a woman with a cape, you know, to be mm-hmm. um, managing your son and um, dealing with an abuse, past abuse relationship. Mm-hmm. I'm just curious, like um, his his father. Mm-hmm. I mean, is it is he in his life? No. Okay. No, his father unfortunately hasn't really been in his life because he's also diagnosed with multiple things, and the two just wasn't mixing. Mm-hmm. You know, you have um, you have someone else that's diagnosed with you know a lot of mental challenges, and then mm-hmm. you have a child, and if you're not properly taking care of yourself, you can't help the child. Mm-hmm. What it becomes is becomes unsafe. Because now the child is growing, and then it becomes disrespectful. 
you know, oh, mm-hmm. no, you're not going to. And then he's, oh, no. I said, oh, no, I'm going to end up at, like, Nanda supervised music. Mm-hmm. So, no, we're not killing so my where, job. where did you yeah. find Twan? <laughs> working in three critical care units, mm-hmm. having children, mm-hmm. working all of the hours that you're working. Mm-hmm. And then you was able to help him pursue his dreams, Bashir pursue mm-hmm. his dreams. Did he always want to act? How did he fall into acting? So, be- okay, because of his diagnosis, <clears throat> I had to always keep him busy. Because, into something. Into something because right. he was very impulsive. Gotcha. Um, just like any other child, though, you know, he would blend with the wrong crowd, if you will. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. So, I'm the parent that's going to dictate who your friends is going to be. Gotcha. So, the minute, so that, leave, that excluded everybody. That okay. means he ain't had no friends, really. Okay. Because everybody that I saw that I went to their house, I didn't agree with what I was seeing. Right. So, no, you can't go over there. So, now this is what I'm going to do. I'm not going to keep you locked in the house. I ain't saying that, y'all. I'm not saying that. Right. right. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you things to do. You're going to play football, basketball. Mm-hmm. You're going to run track. Mm-hmm. And for me growing mm-hmm. up. so you got to go to school to and then you busy. got school activities. So then you ain't gonna have time to do nothing else. You mm-hmm. can get friends wherever you at. Mm-hmm. Was you concerned? Like by doing that, how would he would have any social skills? Um, you know, dealing well, with Well, he people. went to regular school at first. Mm-hmm. So he had social skills and then that's, and then when he would bring friends over, I had to screen them. I had to screen mm-hmm. their parents. You know, I was watching and see, you know, what was going on in the parents. Because then if my child asked to go over there, I got to be comfortable with that. And if the if the situation don't look good to me oh, yeah, or yeah. the behaviors mm-hmm. is not in line with what I believe in, then nobody, you're not going. My, child, my children wasn't allowed to go to nobody's house because I was always afraid of fire, somebody firebombing somebody's house. Yeah, and my yeah, kid yeah, was in yeah, there. So, no, mm-hmm. you can come over to my house and you can spend a night with me. Right. Because I know I'm there, or, or I, my support system was my parents, my mom mm-hmm. and my dad. Um, I had one good friend, you know, sister friend. Gotcha. You know, that's it. So when I move, they move. Gotcha. Right. You know, and that, that's how I operated because I had to work to sustain, to sustain my household, you know, because I had bought a house um, trying to make a better life, you know, for my children mm-hmm. um, and doing <laughs> it as a single woman. And then also, you know, trying to date. So I had at a certain age, I'm a certain age and I'm sneaking because I'm not bringing nobody around my kids. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah, I also yeah, talk about that in my book house. as well. So it's not what you do, how you do it. Now, yeah, I'm, you do it. You know, yeah, I'm a you grown woman, mm-hmm. so I'm not going to do it in front of my kids, but I'm going to have my moments. So, so acting, how did he get into acting? Oh, so the acting part. So because I had him in football, um, he was like star running back. Okay. And he got hurt. Because the biggest guy on the next team, like I used to. Who was that, I, high school? High school. Uh, so I used to hear because I'm. What, I'm, what, what I, team? What, what area Overbrook. was this? Overbrook. Where's yeah. that? And yeah. West Philly. Okay. 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 West Philadelphia. Oh, that's right. I'm in New York. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's fine. So it was in West Philadelphia, um, Will Smith, where Will Smith went to school at. Gotcha. Okay. Right. So I used to hear other like coaches be like, watch out for 22 or get him. You know, you yeah, hear that, that yeah, grimy yeah. talk. Mm-hmm. So they yeah, they would always yeah. come for him because they couldn't catch him. He was gotcha. so fast. Gotcha. So what happened was the quarterback was supposed to throw the ball. He, he threw the ball over Brashear. Brashear went to go. He ran and got the ball, landed on the ball. But when he got up, the I don't know if the biggest guy, the biggest guy from the football team landed on him. And he thought he was Hercules. But I sure thought he was Hercules. I think he just got up and it, his arm broke in two places. But he took the b- football, mm. but he was running with his hand dangling. I ain't going to never forget because I was there. Oh, oh His man. hand dangling. He still, didn't, he still didn't get that. He didn't that realize, his, his he didn't realize oh. until somebody said something to him. And then he just collapsed. And this then the like, ambulance the had rushing. to come. My, my, mm. my, yeah. my, the quarterback on Kareem's team. Um, out at Liberty Park playing the Jamaica Bulldogs broke both his wrists. He had it broke. I mean, it snapped like both. It's his uh, arm snapped, and he was running like he was all telling oh, Chris, it. Chris played. Running. Shout out, Chris. He played college football to this day. Still throwing balls. I saw him in the gym. Broke both his wrists. Yeah, and that was like. And he didn't the, even feel it. He didn't even feel it because he was trying to get that ball to the where he needed to get it to. He was running, running, running. The next thing you know, he was like, and he fell out. And then the um. They had to take him to the um, 
emergency room, kind of find out his arm was broken in two places, so they had to manually put it back in place mm-hmm. before he got the surgery. So he had to get surgery. He had to get put on a ventilator, all that mm-hmm. stuff. It was mm-hmm. very traumatizing. So, you know, for me as a mom, I'm like, that's it. Yeah. I don't care who's scouting you. Yeah. That's it. You ain't playing no more ball. That's ball. it. So we talked about it. We talked about it. He was like, I still want to play. So he had a six-month, about a six-month recovery period. By him doing that, that's how he got into rapping because he okay. had nothing else to do. Mm-hmm. Mm. So I would come home and find my dining room table move because I had a big old mirror at the wall. The mirrors was all the way across the wall. So I would mm-hmm. find the dining room, my um, the room table in the dining room because he's in, in there practicing all day. So oh, okay. that's how he became being a rapper. So he told me he wanted to be a rapper, and I was like, "Yeah, right. Yeah, I don't believe." Because I, I'm a manager. <laughs> I was a manager anyway. I was the manager's group called Chemo. Mm-hmm. Missy Ellie was about to sign them, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. and I had them from when they was 14 all the way up to they got 18, and then they broke up. Okay. Um, and so when he told, so he knew that what I was doing because he, he would go in the studio. Was um, I remember Petey Greg was okay. doing a song with my girls. Um, and I used to take my kids with me. So he knew. So he's like, mom, I want to be this rapper. And I'm like, yeah, all right. No. And I ignored him for about, I'm going to say for about six months. Mm -hmm. And during the summertime, I used to have my children. It's a program, um, in Philadelphia where, um, for four hours, they pay the children to work in different areas of the city. They get paid for it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the, after them four hours, he had to come to my job at the hospital and volunteer. Right. So that was an eight-hour day. And then right. after that, it's practice. Oh, so that's busy. how I would do it. And so he found one of the gentlemen was a producer at my job that I was cool. I call him my brother. Okay. He was he we worked together in some projects. And because he was he got to know the people at my job, they hooked up. I didn't know they hooked up, so I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm thinking he at my mother's or at my, um, you know, at my support mm-hmm. while I'm at work. He at the studio, so mm-hmm. the the guy called me, the producer called me, and was like, "Listen, I know how you are, and I haven't seen you down here, so I, I figure you don't know what's going on." So I said, "What's going on?" He said, "Well, Brashear is now becoming a rapper. He's been recording. And his he's been we've re- re- been so here he recording. To be a rapper first, right? So that's why he rapped on the Empire, yeah. right? Yeah, he and did he, put out a song. Yeah, 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 yeah And yeah, so yeah, he yeah. said, now he's calling himself Yes. I said, Yes, that's a birth control. What is going on? I said, I said, I was <laughs> mad because I felt like he broke through my support system. I mm-hmm. thought I had this whole thing concrete. He ain't doing that. So I said, Well, let me hear his music. And I heard his music. I, I said, Okay, effective immediately. I'm going to be his manager and you can be the producer. He said, you're just going to cut me off like that. I said, well, I'm his mother. He's underage. What you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> that's it. I said, that's, Period. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so we teamed up. Um, you know, we teamed up and, and that's how, that's where it all came from. And so after I noticed, you know, his skills, um, he was saying all kind of stuff that just wasn't my approval. Like he didn't even want me in the studio because i'm a hands-on i was a hands-on manager okay. so mm-hmm. i'm like i'm the producer i'm like do this do oh, that so you one of those moms that you're in it. You, oh i was there yeah. yeah. oh every week yeah i was momager. Momager. momager you're still a momager i was there <laughs> oh you don't have to momager as i don't much. have to momager <laughs> as much yeah. now he's, yeah. he's pretty set yeah okay so i was in there in the studio and he was like mom you know can you leave out for a second then he would say his verse and i was like you know what i gotta figure this out because he's growing up he's a teenager now uh-huh. so i would start to put positive men around him and so we can teach him that he don't have to be cussing and calling women all you know right the stuff that he thought he had to do to be successful right and so i started to mold him and nurture him in that aspect mm-hmm. and i said all right then yes I said, so what? So what is going to make you different from all these rappers here in Philly? We have a million of them. So yeah, you want dope. somebody? You want somebody to pay to come to your show? What are they going to say? Oh, y'all hear crickets? Mm. Me too. Mm. So what I said was, <laughs> this is what I'm gonna do. We're gonna put some dancers. I'm gonna put some dancers on you, but they're gonna be. I'm a dancer by heart, a ballet dancer. That's mm. what I went to school for. So I know how to put shows together. Um, so I said, I'm gonna put some dancers behind you. Um, but they're going to be professional dancers. No twerking allowed. Okay? No twerking allowed. So we auditioned. Right. We auditioned a lot of girls. It was so many that came through. We picked like 13 of them. Right. So I started to train them. 
I had them, they moms, because they were all underage. Mm -hmm. I had them sign, they mothers and, and the dancers had to sign agreements because I had to protect yes. Wow. No dating the artists, no smoking weed. I had a social media manager. Wow. So therefore, everybody's wow. watching. He's watching everybody's Instagram, everybody's social media. Oh, because guess what? If you're out there acting a the fool, they're going to say the Yazettes. They're not going to say Erica, Sonia. They're going to say the Yazettes. <laughs> that's, what they, that's what they names were. They names was the Yazettes. Yes, so we would rehearse three times a week, mm -hmm. three mm -hmm. hours after school. You had mm -hmm. to have a certain average, grade point average. Mm -hmm. You had to be dressed appropriately. You had to be in dance attire. None of that other stuff. You know, mm -hmm. you had to sign in. If you come late, too many times, you won't be a part of the show. Right. Um, so I had strict, you know, because I'm managing. Now all these people, all these children are you under my manual. You strict to the Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, no, no. But, but I don't want to be associated with that. No, no. You know? I can't get mad at it, though. Yeah. <laughs> I can't I, get mad at it. Nothing like that. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, but I had to make sure. So I had to make sure they got home at a certain time. Um, and, and that's how I well, did it. That's how you got to be. Yeah. And so yeah. A, so yeah. after the dance, so I had to teach them how to put a performance together. So that required an introduction. So instead of yes coming out there, stand up there, all right, and then just mm -hmm. rapping and no. The dancers is gonna come out first and then you wanna come through. I told him how we was teaching him how to dance. That's some real artist development. Um, yeah. yeah our artists, artists developed mm -hmm. him. Wow. Um I told him, you know, we taught him how to dance. So his boot camp was, you know, exercising, um, try put him in track because he was dancing and singing. I had to get his stamina up so he can be able to um, do both without catching his and that and that led to acting or he got the role because he was a rapper. He got the Empire? role. No, he got the role because he never acted a day in his life. But what he didn't realize and what I was training him for is every time you get on that stage, he went from brush here to yes. Because mm. I put prompts on the stage, I taught them how to change outfits within two minutes in time frame. So it was a whole show. I would sit there with the producer and put his whole show CD together. That means a TV track, not with all his lyrics yeah, is on the TV track. track. That is my, I can't stand mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. He only had ad libs on there. I might have had a few, you know, a few verses on there because he has asthma. Um, so, you know, the his DJ. So I had a team of 13 dancers, his DJ, and then I put a band behind him because people started to get dancers because they saw what we were doing. Right. So I said, okay, now what we going to do now? I got it. I'm going to put a live band behind you because I want you to get the air for the music and that's going to train you to be a better artist. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, so did, you, did you like have any background in, in, in any of this or this just came through inspiration? No, I started to educate myself. Gotcha. So when I talk about that in my foundation, education gotcha. means whether your child want to be a a, a, a doctor right. because you right. got to educate your, right. yourself on right. How you know what your child need to do in order to be a to, doctor? To, to what the proper mm -hmm. school is? What mm -hmm. the proper credits is? Mm -hmm. right. I know I took credits I didn't need. Got you. You know, right. for my college degree, I had over two hundred something credits when I graduated. And that's, and that's some of the things that so. people in the entertainment industry fail to do, and um, they get these individuals involved. But and people wind up using them. They wind up like using that. them, and, and, and they don't train they put them their child in other people's. Because a lot of these, yeah. a lot of these guys, they you know you could. You could see them on stage. You know, I wouldn't go and see these guys in a concert. I may like Nas, but I can't see him perform. Right. right. You know, it's, but you it's, know what? Performance too? is trash to me. Performance horrible. At you know? Rashir's status, before he got on the show, I was ha I had parents that would call me, paying us twelve hundred dollars for the Yaz to perform. A set at their child's sweet sixteen. Wow. And you know why? Because every time we came, I had my own smoke screen. So I would have to smoke. They would, at, at a sweet 16, we put a whole show together. Wow. We would come with gift cards. I would ask the parent, do you mind if he give her a Bath and Body Works uh, $50 gift card? And then he would bring two dozen of roses. And did he like, rip his shirt off, show the six pack and all that? You know he did. <laughs> I said, now, I said, let me tell you. I said, let me tell you what's about to go down. But he ain't going to go no further than the shirt. So I just want you to know. And then after every Girl, show. But after every show, which mm -hmm. is very important, mm -hmm. this is very important. Okay. I've always had flyers, big flyers, little flyers. One with his his whole body and face on it. 
The other flyers will have his all his social media on it. Like if I had little ones that the social media manager will go around an audience right before his show, right before he come on. Right. And then afterwards, we always had a table where his supporters, because they're not fans, they're his supporters, mm-hmm. can come and meet and greet sign and take pictures right. so he i i always told him you perform and you already act like you made it and you perform like anywhere like we at the madison square garden that's, that's funny that's, you say yeah. that because whether it's two people or 20 right. or 200 well listen and, you put on that show it's funny you we we talk about that here that what we're doing i just know from situations in life you're always auditioning always always, always. you your walk you're always auditioning. Mm-hmm. You could be walking you down be, the block going to the store to get a pack of mm-hmm. chips from the store. You're auditioning. You're auditioning. Because you never know who you're going to run into. How you about, never know. I but might, you never I know. Into, I might run into and a they, chick. And they could be in sweats. <laughs> they can look. Malik. She might want $100. <laughs> but Malik, but they, they can be in sweats. The person that you're talking to can be a the record top record exec yeah. or the top person mm-hmm. at BET or something in their sweats just mm-hmm. walking to the store and you know that's why I always tell him you or never know watching, who's in the audience or just yeah. watching little stuff with you. Absolutely, there's people that I deal with now that mm-hmm. I see in hindsight they was watching me. Mm-hmm. They was watching me from before. Mm-hmm. I saw them places, mm-hmm. and I'm riding the car with them. I'm like, yo, man, I was at a couple of occasions with them, and they just watching. Maybe to see if, you know, they, they see me with my wife. So, mm-hmm. you know, if I go off to the side or whatever, yeah. and the chick just, just to see him, you know, the quality of the man that I am. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, is he going to try to... Somebody's always watching. Somebody's always watching. <laughs> no, no. Mm-hmm. You know, is he going to try to rap on a low? Because to some people, that means something, right? Mm-hmm. Because maybe they don't do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if, if I'm going to do business with him, I want to see what type of character... That's he important. is, yeah, it's right? Important. So then they watch you. Mm-hmm. They watch, they, you know, mm-hmm. I'm going to see if he holds the door. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You know, I want to see, you know. Absolutely. I want to see if he, you know, helps her in the car. And that's what you, that's what you do. That's the important thing. So, so it, it's, it's so funny, though, because when we used to get on shows, like the TLA is like a, a, a nice little venue that a lot of like major arts, artists go on. And we used to open up a lot. And, but I always would require two things. He had to have a sound check, and his dancers had to have a spot check, um, because where we practice at might not be the same space. So they was trained to conform mm-hmm. to whatever space we had. Right. And he always had. So I would get promoters would say to me, "Well, he's only doing two songs. Why is it that he needs a, a sound check? Because mm-hmm. he's a professional. Mm-hmm. That's why." And I would always have to get two separate rooms for him, Mm -hmm. um, a dressing room, because for one, they always dressed. They always would change their clothes and dress, and it was a real performance, and he would have to have his moment so he can pray, get into yes mode, and then the dancers, I needed them to get into their mode, and then we would come together right before the show and do our prayer. Mm. You know, so... Um, back to the prayer. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Back to inviting God. Absolutely, Mm -hmm. and I would clear the whole back because the, my girls were young, they gotta take they gotta take their clothes off in the back. I can't have people behind. So I had security. So I had my get, own security too. So he gets too. the break. How? How does he get the? How so does he, he get got, the break into acting. So he. So I am a networking queen. So everywhere I go, I was still networking because I knew there was only a certain arm length that I can take him networking on my own. Is important. Right. So networking I was is everything. right. Mm-hmm. So I was in agreement with bringing someone on as a co manager. Okay. to assist with getting him to where I needed him to go. So and where, um, where was that? Where was you trying to get him to go? To to, to be a superstar, to be well, an well, actor, was, was, a singer. Oh, so acting, all of the, a combination of everything. Oh, no, because I never put him in the box. Although, oh, he, so said that was, okay. he, although he said he wanted to be a rapper, Okay. I'm saying you doing you everything. Had, and you educated yourself. So, Absolutely. Okay, so then he gets the break out. So the person that I linked, I uh, partner with, um, got a call from Lee Daniels' team and asked if he had anybody that would want to audition for the role. So when he called me and said oh. that, I I didn't even ask my son. I said, he going to do it. Yeah, he's going to do it. He going to do Mama it. Mama just like, yo. I said, oh, Mama he, Jer. Mama Jer, he, he's going to do it. I said, oh, he going to do it. <laughs> and so, 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 so the gentleman was like, do you think he goes? I said, oh, yeah. He, he act every day he on that stage. I said, so... He, we got the script. I said, I'm going to be cookie. 
because I read the script. I said, I'm going to be the mom, Cookie, at the time. I said, That's and you dope. be, and you going to do your thing. So what he did, though, my makeup artist at the time, because the part they, they wanted him to um, audition for was the part that he got punched in the eye. So the, but he got where Cookie beat him, and he had a black eye. So he had the makeup artist, because they had the, the audition was filmed at first. And so he had the makeup artist put the black eye on his face so they can see the whole picture. Mm. When he was rehearsing, as soon as they, we sent the tape, they was like, we're going to fly you in. And the rest is history. It was one shot. The rest is history. And sometimes that's how that happened. One, yeah. one time. And, 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 yeah. and so talk to me about uh, Miss Berry Cares Foundation. So, and mm-hmm. talk to me about Cozy Essentials. I want to get to learn a little more about that before we close. We got about 10 minutes. Okay. So Miss Berry Cares Foundation was birthed. Out of the fact that I had did a book, I did my book before Empire, um, Raising by Sheer Gray, and when I did that book, it brought so much stuff. It was like it was a lot of things in that book that was just really, really hard because I, copy of that. I've yeah. never talked about it. I gotta get a copy and, of that book. Um, any, any copies here? Yeah, yeah. hand me the oh, copy. Oh, I've, yes. I've never talked about it. Reading. Some things that's in the book, and as I'm talking about it, and you know, talking about is some of the challenges. Me? Yeah. As I'm talking we about gotta get a yeah. signature. As I'm talking about some of the challenges in the book, I said, you know what? It's probably a lot of parents out there that's that was just like me that didn't know a child is diagnosed. They didn't know what to do. Mm-hmm. So I said, you know what? I want to start a foundation. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas though I can help parents be better advocates for their um, child um, in reference to ADHD and also educate them on the industry and some of the things I did as a manager um, to get my son to where he is. I'm not promising y'all that your child going to be a star, but I can, I can help you, um, you know, show you the way of like educating yourself and even with contracts, like back then I wasn't as educated with the contractor mm-hmm. stuff that I definitely, some things I would do differently. Mm-hmm. Um, and, 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 and that's what that was about. Um, I'm still in, in the beginning stages of trying to get everything in order. Cause I have a lot of things coming up this year that I'm going to do with the foundation. Mm-hmm. So that's that. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as Cozy Essentials, I'm wearing Cozy Essentials nice, Boutique. Nice, nice, I started Cozy Essentials Boutique um, because I also have onesies pajamas that I'm working on that I've been working on for a couple years. Um, it's, it's different. Mines are different, and you're going to see why. I can't talk about it now. Mm-hmm. But I started Cozy Essentials because I'm so busy, and I just wanted to wear stuff that I can just either look cute, dress down, or dress up. Okay. Um, and still, it's, it's cozy. Like, it's all cozy. of this is cozy and is good. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other thing I just talked about the book. Um, I also have a management. Who rock. Yes, I also have a management company that I, I also started. Um, okay. I'm going to be looking for talent soon. Nice. Um, nice. and but just to speak about moms who rock. Um, moms who rock stands for um, rock stands for raising our children. Mm. And during that event, I honor my moms because I personally just want to say thank you for all that you do for all of the hard work. And sometimes our kids aren't as grateful yeah, yeah. um yeah, and yeah. you know That's they right. really they really don't understand what yeah. we go through mm-hmm. and all the sacrifices yeah, so i go through a lot yeah the job levels in yeah yeah so i just wanted to honor and then also educate um i do a series of panel discussion i have a panel on health and wellness because self-care is the best care mm-hmm. um i might have a panel on um a male perspective so i have an all-male perspective um, and we ask questions because there are things as a young adult that, you know, I would have wanted to know, like how the male thought about it. And maybe yeah. I would, you know, ha- would not have done certain things, right. you know, of the not knowing. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and then I have a, a disability uh, panel on children, parents that have children with disabilities. And so we can talk about some of the resources right. and, you know, try to help the parent on how to get through and, you know, how to get through the school systems. Mm -hmm. Because I talk about all that in um, my book, too, about the IEPs and, Mm -hmm. you know, how to protect your child in school and so they won't be labeled and have stuff on Mm -hmm. their record. that they That stuff that's a manifestation of their disorders. They need more organizations like yours, too, because um, I feel like that's a need in today's society. Yeah. You know, um, and people need to understand that there's this help out there. You know, Malik, there is. Malik has been through some some tough times in his life, mm-hmm. and look where he's at. Mm-hmm. I myself, you know, I've been through some 
you know, pitfalls myself. Mm -hmm. We all have. And we yeah. all have. Yeah. But like I said earlier, it's not a lot of us like, like you. Um, you. And women, it's, it's much harder for a woman, especially that goes through what you went through. In the industry. In the industry. Too, because in know? my book, too, I also talk about, you know, being a woman in the industry, keeping mm -hmm. my morals, my integrity, right, and my yeah. character, right, yeah. and understanding that I am enough and I'm smart enough to do what I need to do for mm -hmm. my son without having to do all that negative stuff. Right, yeah. I just wasn't having it. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At listen, all. I just want to tell you before we close, I I think you're the bomb from the time Sweet. you walked yeah. in. Superwoman. Superwoman. I, I heard him say, we feel like we know you already, but <laughs> it, it was just an easy fun. assimilation. And I wish, because I could you. talk to you all night, you know, <laughs> and, and I would love to have you back. I would love to come to you. Yeah. Um, I want to read this you, book, and we need to have I, her back. I, I'm going to bust the book out, and then I can pass it to <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm have you sign it. <laughs> okay. And, um, you know, anything, seriously, you you part of the family now, yeah. so Thank anything you. I can do. Thank to support, you. to help out with the foundation, Thank to you. come, even if it's just coming to the panel. Hand. See, I'm definitely coming out this way for Moms Who Rock. We're okay. actually getting the itinerary together um, for 2019. There's okay. a lot of big things that I'm going to be doing. And I'm definitely going to call you. you listen, I'm definitely going to call listen, you guys. And I'm, a, and yeah, I'm yeah. also, I'm not all flash and, and, and pomp. I'm all, I'm a boot <laughs> to the ground guy. Mm -hmm. okay. So if you need some people, to, that we got to help you. move some cheers. Yeah. Thank you. And, 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 and you set some up people, some stuff. Set up no, some tables. No, because serious. Everybody wants to everybody be, wants to be the glitz in the yeah. core. But guess mm -hmm. what? You know, refreshments got to be set up. Yeah. Tables got to get moved sometimes. Yeah. Thank you. And, and, and I'm and listen. God is good. Thank I'm you. down for that. Thank we'll you We'll so be in much. touch. Yeah. Tell everybody how they can find you before we close. Hi, everyone. So you can find me um, on Instagram, Miss Berry Biz, M-S-B-E-R-R-Y-B-I-Z, right. on Facebook, Andrea Mayberry. That's A-N-D-R-I-A-M-A-Y-B-E-R-R-Y. Miss Berry Cares Foundation is on Instagram, and Moms Who Rock is on Instagram as well. Y'all heard it first. Thank Listen. you, Conversations with Malik. Thank you all. I had the time of my life. This was like one of the best interviews. I'm coming back. Anyway, I'm I'll feeling, take the three-hour drive. I'm feeling that. And y'all got snacks. And with that, Look, and they and got this snacks is, and candy, every day, every day. and I had water, and they going to have apples the next time I come. And, and they going to have apples, y'all. Slices in the refrigerator. <laughs> and with that being said, before we close the show, we got guests. Oh, this. this. Quick, quick, oh, yeah. quick. Okay. We got another guest. We got a guest. All right. That's one of guests. Okay. Guess Let's see this. if she get it. Quick. Let's see if she get it. If if we could just figure out what it is you're supposed to be doing, the sooner you are able to get about the business of doing that. The way through the challenge. Oprah. Is to get <laughs> still. Oprah. 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 Yo, listen. Next conversations. Right. Turn that off, Jeff. Conversations with Malik. We got two cameras. Conversations with Malik loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Peace. Boom. Peace.